Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me for the first episode of I Don't Have a Band. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make cheap and awesome acoustic panels for your home studio or even your home theater. Or perhaps your wife thinks you make too much noise in the bathroom. I don't know, but that's your business. These things work great, and they're cheap. You can make them for under 20 bucks a panel. And I'm talking Canadian dollars. Now this video assumes that you've got some basic carpentry skills. If you want to learn some carpentry, there's some other great videos on YouTube. I'm just going to be helping you remove some of the guesswork so you can get right to making a set of your own. Okay, let's get started. So what we're going to be making are 24 inch by 48 inch panels. The inside measurement is approximately 22 and 3 quarter inches, but I'm going to get into more about that later. If you follow these dimensions, the acoustic treatment insulation we're going to be using is going to fit right in with no cutting and no mess. Some things you're going to need to make your frame are a power drill, a circular saw, a screwdriver, 8 by 1 and a quarter wood screws, some wood glue, a tape measure, and a pencil. If you follow my lumber recommendations of making two panels at a time, you'll have almost no waste. So the lumber that you're going to need for two acoustic panels are four 1x4x8s, which you'll cut down into four 46 and a half inch pieces, that's for the sides. You'll get two pieces from each 8 foot length. Four more pieces at 24 inches, that will be for your tops and bottoms. If your lumber is actually 8 feet, then you will get four clean cuts out of one piece. And then there's the inner support rail at about 22 and 3 quarter inches. You're going to need four of those and you'll get them out of one piece. As there can be variances in the thickness of the lumber, I'm going to show you a trick later to make sure you're measuring this correctly. To be clear, from the stock that you just cut, you're going to require only two of each to make one panel. By making two panels at a time, this is all the lumber that you're going to waste. The acoustic absorption material that I'm using is the Roxil Safe and Sound Insulation 24 inch. The dimensions of this insulation will fit perfectly in the frame that we are making. If you don't have the exact product in your area, research the dimensions of this insulation and make sure the one that you purchase is the same. Otherwise, you may have to trim the insulation to fit or make adjustments to your frame to fit the new insulation. The Roxel Safe and Sound 24 inch comes with 8 bats so you can make 8 panels from one package. Assembling the frame is pretty straightforward. Just make sure that the top and bottom pieces sit on the ends of the side pieces not on the inside in between each side piece. I would recommend drilling pilot holes first before screwing two wood screws into the corners. It's a good idea to probably put a little bit of wood glue in between the two pieces of wood just to ensure you have a nice strong bond. Repeat these steps for the remaining corners until you have a nice rectangular frame. Now here's that tip for the inner support. What I'd recommend is once you've got your outer frame built, Take a measurement from the inside. The thicknesses of wood can vary from batch to batch. It's a good idea to make sure that this piece is nice and snug as it will make it so much easier to install. The length of this piece should come in somewhere between 22 and a half and 22 3 quarter inches. Again, make sure to drill pilot holes before screwing in your wood screws. I also put a bead of glue along the outer edge of the support rail. Repeat these steps for the other sides. You'll create good structural support for your frame and it also creates a cradle for the insulation to sit in. Lay your assembly on the floor. If you've measured correctly and assembled everything properly, your Roxel Safe and Sound will drop right in and fit like a glove. And with no cutting, you'll have no mess. By the way, on a side note, the music that you're hearing in the background are one of my backing tracks that I've got up on my YouTube channel. I've got a whole series of them there right now. So if you don't have a band and you feel like jamming, no problem. we got a full band to back you up and you can practice your solos for hours. So when you're done making your panels, head on over and check them out. Now it's time to get wrapping. With fabric, that is. Choose a fabric that you like that's aesthetically pleasing to your room. The fabric I chose was a little bit rigid and I found it minimized creases and was easier to work with. To wrap your panels, you're going to need a roll of your chosen fabric, a staple gun, a good sharp pair of scissors, and a hammer. The fabric I chose came in a 58 inch roll which was absolutely perfect because I only had to make one cut for every panel. You're going to want to roll out your fabric face down. This means the outside fabric you're going to see in your panels is actually going to be facing down on the floor. I found working on a carpet really helped because you need to pull the fabric really tight around the frame and the carpet helped in creating some resistance. Next you're going to place your frame and insulation face down on the inside of your fabric. You want to see the back support pieces facing upwards. 
It's critical to ensure that your panel is lying straight on the fabric. You're going to need 6 inches of fabric at least on either side of the panel to make your wrap correctly. A 58 inch roll means I only have to make one cut, but you're going to have to calculate depending on yours. Here's a tip to make sure that your fabric is straight. Take measurements all around your panel. Make sure this measurement is equal all the way around. Once you're certain your fabric is straight, use a straight edge, mark off the distance for the last side, and make your last cut. Now I'm going to reveal the deep dark secret on how to make perfect corners. You need to make a strategic cut in the fabric which is parallel to the top and ending right at the edge of the side. This doesn't have to be super precise, but you're going to want about half an inch to about three quarters of an inch of an overhang on the top rail, which will give you enough fabric to wrap around the edges of the corner. Take your time and don't rush this cut. Making this cut correctly will give you enough fabric to wrap around the inside of the corners and give you enough room to staple them. Now proceed to follow the same steps on the remaining corners. The space that you leave on the fabric doesn't have to be exact on every corner. You just want to make sure that the cut lines up with the side frame and that you have enough fabric to wrap around each corner. Now it's time to start stapling. You're going to start on a long side and pull it tight. Careful that the panel doesn't move. Remember, because you measured it accurately to make sure the fabric was straight. Once it's tight, and again the carpet is helping me here, put a staple approximately in the middle just to secure its placement. Repeat this step on each corner, pulling tight each time, just putting a single staple. From there, just keep dividing in between the staples from one end to the other, pulling it tight each time until you have a row of staples that are no more than an inch apart. Now you're going to work on the opposite side. The key here now is tension. Depending on your fabric, and you want to be careful not to rip it, you want to pull it pretty tight because you want to make sure there are no creases on the front. As I mentioned before, the fabric I chose was quite rigid and not susceptible to creases. You're going to have to make a judgment call depending on the type of fabric that you use to determine how much tension you're going to need to apply to ensure there are no creases and that you don't rip your fabric. As before, ping pong from end to end, continually dividing the distance in between your staples. Make sure to pull it tight each time so you have a nice tight wrap around the edge. Now it's time to get back to those corners. You're going to want to trim off a little excess fabric from that strategic cut you made. You just need a couple of inches to make a clean fold. The rest is just going to get in the way if you leave it. Now you're going to fold the fabric down and then over from the sides to make your corner. Play with this a few times until you've got it right. While you're doing this, you're going to want to make sure that you're also creating tension because we don't want any creases to appear on the sides or the front. Holding your fold tightly with your fingers, make sure the top flap is going to fold over correctly and straight before you put any staples in. Once you're happy with your fold, make sure you staple in both flaps in securely. Don't overload your corner with staples, but you do want to make sure that you have enough that all of your folds are securely in place so the fabric doesn't move. Keep checking the fold and smoothing out the fabric before you put in each staple. Now you're going to fold the top flap. Make sure the fold that you make in the fabric lines up perfectly straight with the edge of your frame. Keep checking this until it's perfect. Once you've got it lined up perfectly, hammer that sucker with a few more staples. Remember, at any time during this process, you want to be checking the tension of the fabric. Don't forget, make sure it's taut and then put the staple in. Review these steps carefully to ensure that your corner is as clean as this one. Repeat these steps for the opposite corner and then finish stapling the rest of that top edge. Remember to continually check the tension of the fabric all the way through the stapling process. Once done, the top and bottom of your panel should look something like this. 
Once you're done stapling and you're confident that the fabric is securely in place, lightly hammer any staples that didn't quite make it all the way into the wood. The last stage in the wrapping process is the backside. No one is actually going to see this part because it's going to be up against the wall. However, it's a good idea to completely cover the insulation on the inside and have a nice finish to your panel. I found this underlining fabric. It's similar to what you'd find underneath a chair or couch. It's probably the cheapest fabric that you'll find in the fabric store. You don't need to try and win any awards with this process. The main consideration is you don't want to see it from the front. You also want to avoid stapling into the staples underneath that's holding your fabric. If you're a perfectionist like me, you're going to want to make the back look reasonably good as well. So don't rush through this process. I've experimented with cutting it to measure first, but I found it harder to staple and create tension when putting it on. By lining up the underlining fabric on two sides, I was still able to create tension by pulling on the excess fabric on the other two sides. And this benefited the lazy side of me because I now only had two sides to cut. Just be aware, whatever you do when you're cutting this fabric, you don't want to cut the fabric underneath. You've come a long way and you're almost finished your panel, so you don't want to cut through to the fabric below. My fabric was quite dense, so the hobby knife that I used to cut the backing fabric didn't cause any damage. You could also turn the entire panel over if you had a good cutting surface to work on and use the edge of the panel as a cutting guide. This would be the safest method. It all depends on the tools you have and the workspace you have to work in. Just make a good judgment call. And there you have your finished panel, all ready for mounting. And here are some of the panels I made freshly mounted in my studio. I customized my own hardware to mount these. I could cover mounting tips in future videos. If you'd like to see this or anything else, just throw a request into the comments. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please let me know in the comments. And if you want to be notified of future videos, please hit that subscribe button. Remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. There are a lot of great musical projects you can do by yourself right from your own home. See you next time.